Anything that your mother or your father has told you over your lifetime. <laughs> that is great because now I don't feel so alone. <laughs> My story starts with I'm 10 years old and I'm looking out the window and it is a nice sunny day. So nice that I go to my mom and say, Mom, can I please go outside? She says to me, Boy, if you don't get over there and sit down, I know something. Now, as a child, you don't really know what that means, so you just go take a seat. <laughs> and then you sit there, but it's like the wind is calling my name. It's going. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up again. I get enough courage to say, Mom, can we all go outside? She said, Boy, if you don't get over there and sit down working on my last nerve, I'm going to pop you upside your head. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first two I didn't understand. But the last one popped me upside my head. I did. Why? Because I got plenty of those in my short span of living. <laughs> but after a few minutes, she says, okay, all you guys just go outside because you're getting on my nerves. Now I'm excited at this point, so we're running, we're playing, we're having fun, we're tagging each other, we're going all over the place. But then suddenly I noticed that the sun had gone down. Does anybody know the rule about when the sun goes down? Oh, ooh. Yeah, it, yeah, ooh. <laughs> but you have to make your way home. But a lot of the kids did that, but me and my brother and some other kids, well, we weren't quite that obedient. So we just kind of meandered around a little bit, and then here's when you know the sign is time to come in. She would step to the door, she'd say, boy, don't you make me come out there. And that means you got to skedaddle and make your way home. So she, so she opens up the door and she says, get upstairs, take your bath, come down to eat, and go to bed. Now, because she's a disciplinarian, we follow her rules, took the shower, Day, and then we went to bed. She comes into, room, into, into the room a few minutes later and she says, I just want you all to know that I love you and I want what's best for you. Now being 10 years old, hearing that from your mom, it gives you comfort. You have that guidance. So I began to slowly close my eyes and just say, wow, this woman really loves me. <laughs> and I awaken and I'm 18 and I finished high school. Now I can't tell you guys what happened between 10 and 18. <laughs> but anyway, I'm 18 years old and I say to my mom, I don't know what I want to do, but I think I want to try college. So my mom steps to the plate like a slug, Louisville slug. And when I throw the pitch, she hits the ball, but she knocks it clean out of the park. And that meant that I know I have to leave this house now. <laughs> on my departure, she says, though, she comes to me and she says that she kisses me on the cheek. She says, I want you to go and do your best. And that stuck to me again. And I was like, wow, she really wants me to do my best. So on my way to the university, uh, my friend Jody, his mom and dad, they drove us there. And when we got to Alabama State University in Montgomery, Alabama, she says to the both of us, you're here to do your best. So it sticks once again. So we go upstairs, we drop the luggage off, we come back downstairs, and on this side of the world is where all the fellas hang. You know, you get out, you got the shirt, you got the tie, you got the cut, you're the coolest guy on the campus. But the problem is, there's like 5,000 other guys, so it really doesn't work. So the people that were there, they took us all, and then we meandered to the other side, walking all cool with the swag on and everything. And then when we get to this side, we see all of these lovely women. Now when I get there, I'm kind of confused because all these women, what am I supposed to do with all these women? <laughs> Have you ever seen Avatar, right? When you take your hair and you connect it to the animals, <laughs> the animals with you for the rest of your life. Well, mine was a little different. There was just too many women I was getting connected. He'll get connected, they'll get connected. And I'm saying, I'm just turning around because I really don't know what to do. So I told the fellas, look, we got to throw this right here to make the meat dead. I don't even know if I'm supposed to do my best with these or choose the one that I like. <laughs> so the, the weekend went off without a hitch. I wake up Monday morning and then I proceed to the classroom and there the professor says, you all are here to do your best. And like three comments converging at one time, it was like, and it was a big old beacon of light that went off in my mind. Not only was I supposed to have fun, but the goal is to do your best while you're here. 
So that went out, we're really, really cool. Now we get back to the room and I fall asleep once again. But I fall asleep thinking that when you're in a university environment, it is to really, it is good to really try to find a nice woman for yourself. But here's what's more important, that I was there to do the best that I can. So as I begin to fall asleep, I thought about that and my eyes closed. And when you know, when I wake in this time, guess what? I have finished Alabama State University at this time, and I'm the most excited person in the room. My brothers, they tried to find a place, but men are not really good with direction, so they got lost. But the <laughs> most important person was my mom and my two sisters. When we go back to my place where I live, she looks at me, and then she says these words. She says, I am so proud of you. When she got finished, I took my degree because it didn't mean anything to me. I said, this is for you for just believing in me. Now, I'm starting to cry, so I turn away from her. I said, look, there's no need for you to be proud of me because when I get done, I'm going to really, really make you proud. So she goes home, and I'm sitting, and I'm thinking about, should I pursue this MBA? Everybody say, oh, you're smart enough. But should I pursue my dreams? And that's the issue with life. Do you go get the education? Or do you pursue what's more important? I thought about it. Dreams are more important. So I, go, <laughs> I go over here. And to make this really work, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And this is where all the excitement, all the hub was. So when I got there, I'm thinking, I'm going to just jump right in and the world is going to open up for me. But that's not the case. You have to find your way. Network. Not good at it. Never been good at it. Don't even know what it meant. But I knew back in college I should have done that. But that's okay. But you got to start and you got to really, really work. Didn't get much traction there. So I moved to Orlando, Florida, looking for more tracks and more ability, more substance. And when I got here, I went to see my mom on Christmas Day. And this is the most important pillar that she gave me. She says to me, son, I may give out, but I will never give up. And when you think about that, and anybody think about the pillars that your family leave, number one is your family's always going to give you discipline and love. You always got to do your best. Somebody's going to always be proud of you. But you always got to make sure that you give out and never give up. Those are the four pillars to my life, and I live them doing push-ups. Thank you. <laughs>